Well, looks like I got the four-wheel drive working in the Silverado just in time. I fixed it just in time for this thing to have a hiccup. It was a pretty bad hiccup, too. Hick up that thing, which if uh, take a pretty good close look. Well, this one's actually the worser one. Hang on. It ain't no good. <coughs> and then when we were loading it on the trailer. broke that axle shaft. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, that little hole you see light through, there used to be a U-joint in there. Oh well, back to it. Well, the drive shaft mission is on hold. And the reason why is whenever I took it out, Actually, I didn't take it out. It fell out. But I realized the reason it fell out was there was a dent in it. And with a dent in it, it's never going to be right. And the fact it's never going to be right, no sense in putting it back in until I get a new one. So I dropped it off at the local drive shaft shop. They're going to fix it up. But in the meantime, I'm going to take care of problem number two that keeps this thing from being a roller. And that is, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. You can't really see it, but that axle shaft is busted. So, I got my new one here. This is a Dodge Dana 44. I got this axle at the scrapyard. Believe it or not, you can still buy these axles. Uh, you just got to kind of piece them together. I can get that end off Rock Auto, this end off AutoZone, and slap it all back together. But we're going to... Um, that one's out of a salvage yard. I did replace the U-joint in it because you should. I mean, it doesn't cost that much and doesn't take that much time. But this way, like let's put it this way. I bought the whole axle cheaper than I could have bought just those pieces. Not counting the U-joint. But what I'd like to go over is Dana 44 style hub removal. Hub and front we'll go a little further we'll go the whole axle remover but the main thing most of you are going to get out of this is how to remove and replace this hub so let's go ahead the first part is to go ahead and we'll put that in the free position we'll go ahead and take these allen heads out and remove this tire you won't have to do that um Actually, we'll remove the tire after a little bit because I'll show you how to take the hub out without removing the tire. Because honestly, I would, <laughs> I'd like to get a set of chromoly axle shafts, even though they don't make them for the Dana 44. I know everybody's gonna say you should upgrade to a Dana 60. I will. It ain't in the budget right now, and these tires are damn near new. So, whenever I do get a little bit of budget, I'll upgrade to a Dana 60. And until then, because I'll need wheels and everything. Until then, we're going to run this truck as is and continue to break stuff in the uh, name of fun. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, we got all the bolts loose. And all I do is I, sometimes you can just wiggle it, but if not, take a dead blow. And there it pops off. Alright, now all that in there. Oops. Drop something here, hold on. All that in there looks kind of intimidating, but trust me, it's not really that bad. You just got basically an inner and an outer snap ring. So for the inner snap ring, sorry, I'm grabbing my tools. You're gonna want a set of snap ring pliers, and then all you gotta do is look around. Mine's right on top. Find the two holes. I'm trying to do this without bumping the camera. There we go. Oh, almost got it. Oh, there we go. There's that snap ring. And then there's an outer snap ring, which is 
basically like a wire. And what you gotta do is find the end of it. Trying to do this without bumping the camera is a little difficult. There it is. Yep. I don't know if you can see that real. Let me get a light real quick. Right. In there, you can wait. Right in there, you can see where that black piece of wire comes down and then stops. What you want to do is you're going to want to get yourself a pick of some sort. Actually, that light helped me out a lot. Get yourself a pick of some sort. Get up in there and just pop that. There we go. Right out like that. It just sits in a little, oops, sorry, blind the camera. It just sits in a little groove right in there. And you're pretty well good to go. Now, here is where I'll take two bolts that are in the hub. Two of those Allen heads you just loosened up. I'll put them in. Just a couple threads, that's all you need. If your hub is fresh and nicely greased, it should. Oh, there it goes. There's the whole kit and caboodle. Right out. And now you're down to the axle nuts. So, for the sake of sakes, and because I gotta take the spindle off anyway to get the axle shaft out, I'm gonna go ahead and buzz this tire off aft camera and uh, get it out of the way. And we'll go over disassembly of the wheel bearing nuts. You need a special socket for that. And go from there. All right, now I've got that tire out of the way. You need a special socket. It's got those four little points on it. And what it does is it reaches on up in there and there's a lock nut that has four locks on it, like that. Now the best way i found to take this off is with a gun. And all you're gonna do is go in. Now this is only for removal, I don't put them back on. But anyways, there's the lock nut. Okay, and then inside is a washer. Sorry, I haven't really uh, I haven't rehearsed a ton of this. So I mean, it's not like it's already loose. I was driving this thing the other day. There's your locking nut with the keyway. That's all it's got. It's got a little key on it. I don't know if you can see it. That goes up on top of the spindle. You'll see that when I get the spindle off. And then you can take this nut off. There's an inner nut too. Dang it. Didn't stay in the socket.
Yep, there's the inner one. No different than the outer one. They're interchangeable as far as I can tell. And what I forgot to do, take caliber off. So on my Dodge, you gotta take this nut, this nut off. Sorry. This nut up here. This nut off. And then that whole sucker comes off. So let's go ahead and do that. Your vehicle may vary. that take our caliber stack it back air so it's up and out of the way and now we can dump dump dum back here like this very carefully slide the whole hub assembly off and there you go so set it down, nice and pretty light, and now we'll take the spindle off, which is right here, and I believe those are 9 sixteenths, they're 9 sixteenths or half, depending on how much I rusted, I think. Must be 9 sixteenths here. Yep, there we go. And uh, if you haven't already put on some gloves, <laughs> I highly recommend it. Me, I'm just going to get dirty because I ain't got time for any of that. But we just buzzy top. with all your washers. I wiggle it a little bit to get the washers all broke up. Alright, take this off. There's that. And believe it or not, most likely yours will not come apart that easy. I'm going to tell you this right now. If it's been on there more than a day, you might have a fight in your hands. But luckily, 
I messed mine up more than once. <laughs> so here's broken axle piece number one. Which can get interesting if uh, it grenaded too bad. You can see it's uh it's not nothing left of that one. And then here comes the inner one. Which it looks like there's no way me and the heaven almighty are gonna make it make it fit it out of that hole. Looks like this will be a job for the torch. But there you go, I'll torch that puppy out of there a little bit. There went a what you call it? And uh doesn't look like there's any other damage, but once once I get this axle shaft tore off, I'll come back and we'll uh, we'll go over putting the new one in. Okie dokie, smoky, got it. Get it, got it good. Sometimes you can forget to remember stuff, and that's what I did here. Yeah, you gotta take this caliper bracket off because the axle shaft isn't gonna fit out of the caliper bracket by itself. Know what I mean? So, yeah, you gotta do that too. Don't forget. Okay, rock and rolling. shafts which it's always a possibility with a junkyard unit you didn't get the right one but it looks about right smells about right tastes about right well get it up and the tricky part is oh hold on might need a pry bar a little bit figure out how I want to pry on it.
grease fittings killing me. This uh, U joint's got one of them little screw in grease fittings. Yeah. There we go. Sorry, my other ones were a little better than this. I'm going to reuse these axle seals from the old one just because they seem to be um, a little bit better shape. You know what I mean? I know, I know, I could, if I really wanted to do this right, I would go get new ones, but, let's face it, this is a woods truck, sometimes good enough is good enough, you know what I mean? But yeah, alright, there's that axle shaft in, it's splined in pretty good, feels like it anyway. that seal off but you get the idea at this point all right now most of the rest of this is just going to be reversing the order of everything we took off starting with this guy who's going to go on here and hold this sucker straight supposedly maybe yep and then you got Where's my beaten stick? Beater stick! Is that you? Over there. Okay. Alright. Where did that desk guard go? Desk guard! Desk guard! on, fancy washers, and fancy nuts. Now these nuts You're going to want to uh, take a look at them. See how it's convac like, con like rounded at the top and flat in the bottom? Flat side goes in. Always, always. Unless it's some sort of self-centering nut, like a lug nut. These are not self-centering. They're not any centering. They're not even casually centered. them suckies, suckers on there, puppies, suckies, them things, them dooly doos to, to fit the widgets. What do I do with that socket? Oh, there it is. It's on the end of this. What you is it? You don't need to destroy them, but you want them on there pretty good. Because this is where oop, all the weight 
on this side front axle sits. Because believe it or not, all full float, all front axles that are solid axles are full float. Because otherwise, you wouldn't be able to steer. Now you're going to want to be, for the most part, careful here. There is a seal on the back side of this. You don't really want to mess up unless you're already looking to change it. Uh, I'm not, so there's that. But for right now, what I usually do is I just take the first, first nut. And for these purposes, I take the socket. Once you get it started on, all I'm going to do is spin it kind of hand tight for now. Because we're going to have to set the torque. I got an old school method of doing that. That an old timer showed me once that I've used ever since. It seems to work good. Also, you could repack your wheel bearings at this time. I I don't put very many miles in this try. Actually, I've changed this axle shaft probably twice in a thousand miles. Just not saying that I really beat it up, but th this just seems to be a vulnerable point. And it is an off-road vehicle. Probably should bend that out just a little bit. Yeah, it'll be all right. It'll self-clear. Anyway. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw the caliper back on and the caliper bracket and I like to throw the tire back on and then I'll go over how I set my wheel bearing torque. Old school method. Non-scientific, try it at your own risk. Okay. Oop, I didn't want to throw that away. Alright. Alright, so my way of old school way of setting the backlash in your bearing. As you know, the, the standard wheel bearing, you don't want it tight, tight, but you want it rotating. You don't want it loose, but you don't want it dragging either. So what they said, to, what we used to do in the Army back in the days of deuce and a half and such force, is we would put... Tighten the wheel bearing up. I have to switch sides here. And keep tightening it up. Until we got it's dragging. There. It's tight there. Or you can even get it to stop sometimes if you do it completely right. Which is kind of what I'm going for. I'm trying to see if I can get this sucker to stop. Well, to sit back up on there. Sucker ain't getting tight enough to stop. I'm gonna have to edit this footage. Go back and see if I messed up. Tell you what, let's take these out. Like I said I've done this before, just not today. You know what I mean? It's, 
well, it's not tight, but it's stopped there. I can still spin it, but boy. So what you want to do is go back in there and just back it off an eight to a quarter turn if you didn't get it too tight already. I might have gotten it too tight. Hold on. Let me get my extension back on. turn and we're good and then from there on just putting this washer back in where's that stupid bite stupid bite Like I said, it's got that key on it. It's one of the ways I've found. It's kind of nice is taking the, get the hole as close to the top of the key bay, put it on one of those little dilly dads. There we go. Now just get another dilly dad. Watch your who's it thing. Push it off. Now it's in there. And now I can take the other one. socket get it on there and then this one is the one you want to hammer on a million pounds Ta -da. check make sure it still spins still spins pretty good Take our hub assembly and start putting that puppy back together. There should be a little wiggle in it. Mm, looks like there's some crud in there. That's what we're going to take and remove the broken up crud. 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 Dirt and crud. Dirt and crud. Try this again. There's 
my persuader. that sucker in goes this sucker you can almost set that by hand and then that ring Oop. watch you don't shoot yourself in the head with the snap ring Seated good. Looks good. Looks like it's in the groove. Now what you're going to want to do is you don't want to just hammer this thing on because you got to line it up with the bolt holes. But just kind of eyeball it up a little bit. little fingers on it actually on this warren hub help line it up looks like and yep and whenever you're tightening down anything you don't want to hammer anything just all the way just bat, 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 and hammer it on you want to uh, draw it down evenly in your star crisscross type pattern. And these don't these don't take a lot of a whole lot of torque because quite frankly they're really skinny, really long bolts. Quite often you'll see uh, where there's one or two just missing because, well, you know, that's how things go. Around the horn. Each one just a little bit of oomph. hub works um, this thing has a spool in it that's why I keep breaking front axle shafts but the nice thing about that is if you want to see if your hubs actually lined up and everything you spin the wheel and it locks and now um, against that axle on the other side great for off-road horrible for axle shafts <laughs> boy this thing freaking eats them and that's it. Uh, take it off the jack stand. 
throw all the scrap metal away, and I have to clean up this shop. This shop is horrible. I mean it. It is downright just nasty. I'd show you around, but I'd be embarrassed to. Well, if you like that, rate, comment, subscribe, do whatever. Uh, yeah, I could have used new seals. A couple other things I could have done, but this this isn't a show truck. This isn't a... I, I, I don't plan on having these axles very long anyway. If you follow my drift. You know what I mean? Alright, out. It's a glorious day whenever you get back from the drive shaft shop. Mostly because... I try to make the drive shaft, if I gotta put one in, the last thing I put in. And a word to the wise, even if you buy you know your junkyard drive shaft it, it just makes sense to take it to a shop and have them go over it once real quick you know just to make sure that everything's fit and fiddle which this is a used drive shaft i picked this up for 50 bucks and <laughs> to be honest with you it did not fit so i took it to my local shop and uh they checked it out and they found out it was bent so we got a new tube lengthen it a little bit on account of this is not your average truck so therefore it needed to be a little bit longer and now we're gonna throw her in a little loctite and a little bit out the door all right one thing i wanted to show you guys while i'm thinking about it and it might be actually easier to show you out of the truck actually i know it'd be easier is if you run a dodge you need these axles with the clips on the inside or even a GM after you bake out that plastic and you want to make sure because this is a pinion yoke uh, an old pinion yoke off of an eight and a quarter Dodge rear it doesn't have that little locator tab it locates off of the clips on the drive shaft on the excuse me on the um, U joint see how it goes over that little clip and the clip keeps it centered and it's not always the easiest thing to fit up you gotta fiddle and play and there it goes maneuver it but once it's in I mean it's it's centered good and then you got your straps that just go over the top so you want to make sure that your clips are turned towards the inside not out here because you want as much surface area as you can to center them and there you have it it's on there just as good so keep that in mind if you're doing any Mopar work and it's aggravating as heck but I have yet to ever go to a hard uh, auto parts store and get the same <laughs> same size strap kit for the front and the back that's aggravating oh so you want to keep two different wrenches and also, a little blue Loctite never hurt nobody. I highly recommend it in this application. Okay, so before I even crawl under, turn my little clips so that they're to the ends. And let's go to town. Eh, who doesn't like getting a little involved with their projects? Honestly, it looks a lot worse than it is. <laughs> Just lost a little skin. Put a little blood in the clampy. But there it is. Ta-da! The last piece! Brand new drive shaft. Let's get this thing out of the garage, shall we? Now let's see if it'll move out. Start to warm up.
All right, I'm gonna take it for a test drive. Ah, success! <laughs> the garage is empty. Clamp be smoother than he's ever been, and running real fast. All right, well, I gotta go eat supper and clean up this mess. Man. All right, peace out. I'm gonna go eat supper.